Ideological subversion is, is the slow process which we call active measures. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, even if I take him by force and show him he will refuse to believe it, when a military boot crashes his balls, then he will understand, but not before that. When their job is completed, they are not needed anymore. They know too much. They, obviously, they get offended. They will be lined up against the wall and shot. Welcome back to the channel. I am Commander Tyrael, and this is Project 1331M, NATO designation Parkim a refitted version of the East German Navy's anti-submarine warfare corvette developed in the 1970s. This video will cover the stats for both versions of the ship with the hope that the East German and arguably more potent version will be seen in the future. Built by the Volgast Bean Werft shipyard, the ships were designed for coastal anti-submarine warfare. In case of an all-out NATO Warsaw Pact war in Europe, their prime targets would have been the small U-206 coastal submarines of the West German Navy. The first ship was launched on the 9th of April 1981 in Rostock, and subsequently, another 15 ships were built until 1986. To make production more economical, the Soviet Union agreed to purchase another 12 ships, thereby effectively subsidizing the East German shipbuilding industry. Though useful as a coastal anti-submarine warfare platform, the Soviet production of the similar but far more powerful Grisha class made this purchase an unusual decision for the Red Navy. After German reunification, the former East German Navy ships were sold to the Indonesian Navy in 1993, who then set about extensively refurbishing their Parkims to the point that the refit exceeded the cost of the purchase. They are still in service, both in the Indonesian Navy and the Russian Baltic Fleet. The ships of the Soviet Navy were named Parkim II by NATO and were fitted with more modernized weapon systems, which is the version that we see in game. At first glance, this warship seems like it could be a contender for one of the best coastal ships in War Thunder. Unfortunately, this vessel is severely limited in game. Some of this is due to its design and some of this is due to game mechanics, but nearly all of its shortcomings are defined by its class and its role. It is a true modern corvette. To help but understand this, first I'll explain what that means. A corvette is a small warship. It is traditionally the smallest class of vessel considered to be a proper or rated warship. The class above, the corvette, is a frigate, while the class below was historically the sloop of war. A corvette is typically between 500 and 2000 tons. During the age of sail, corvettes were one of many types of smaller warships than a frigate with a single deck of guns. The role of the corvette consisted of mainly coastal patrol, fighting minor wars, supporting large fleets, or participating in show the flag missions for their respective colonial power. The corvette reappeared during World War II in a similar form, existing as an easily built patrol and convoy escort vessel. The British naval designer William Reid drew up a small ship based on a single shaft whale catcher. The simple design and mercantile construction standards lent itself to rapid production in large numbers. Their chief duty was to protect convoys throughout the Battle of the Atlantic and on the routes from the UK to the Soviet Union. The most well-known of these was the Flower Class Corvette, which was originally designed for offshore patrol work. In an anti-submarine role, it had a few shortcomings. It was shorter than ideal for ocean-going escort work. It was too lightly armored for anti-aircraft defense, and the ships were barely faster than the merchantmen that they escorted. As a result of these deficits, the corvette was superseded in the Royal Navy as the escort of choice by the frigate, which was larger, faster, better armed, and had two shafts. After the conclusion of World War II, modern navies began to trend away from large capital fleets and towards smaller, more maneuverable surface capability. Modern corvettes carry on the submarine hunting tradition and are usually armed with medium and small caliber guns, surface-to-surface -surface missiles, surface-to-air missiles, and anti-submarine weapons, with many carrying an anti-submarine helo. Primary armament is usually for self-defense or border enforcement. Most countries with coastlines can build corvette-sized ships easily, either as part of their commercial shipbuilding activities or in purpose-built shipyards. The sensors, weapons, and other systems required for surface combat being specialized and are purchased on the international market. These systems usually take up 60% of the construction budget. 
Countries that border smaller seas such as the Baltic or the Persian Gulf generally build smaller and more maneuverable corvettes, with Russia operating the most of this class in the world. As defined, the Parkim is a modern corvette, and it was built to replace the obsolete subhunters of the Volksmarine. The ships were constructed with regular stainless steel and consisted of 10 waterproof compartments. Propulsion consisted of three Soviet-designed M504 56-cylinder diesel engines. Middle engine provided power to a variable pitch propeller in cruising speed, while the other two outer engines served as two outer fixed propellers for boost speed. Total power output was 14,250 horsepower. Over 800 tons at full load, they were able to leave coastal waters even in rough weather. The Russian version is fitted with the same armament and ammunition count as the Corvette MPK Project 12412 Pauk, a powerful AK-176 76mm semi-automatic cannon. It can be considered as the equivalent to the Otto Malara 76 seen in the Spaviero, but with a slower rate of fire. The targeting speed of the turret is impressively fast and responsive even without mods. It is able to target multiple targets with speed and track fast aircraft. As the primary weapon, this is your only weapon that can deal with a wide variety of threats. The main downside of the system is that there is only a single turret with a single cannon and it has a disgustingly low ammo count for a ship of its size. It only has access to high explosive and HEVT shells, and it is rear mounted, meaning that it's hard to use in an aggressive engagement. It can be tricky to save ammunition while trying to engage enemy ships, and for this reason, the captain must know where, how, and where to aim and fire. It takes time and practice to maximize the effectiveness of this gun, especially against surface targets. The Soviet version is also armed with a single station AK 630 30mm rotary cannon, close in weapon system. This is a devastating weapon due to the fast rate of fire and calibre. Ammunition-wise, it only uses self-detonating high explosive, meaning that it's not able to take out heavy targets very effectively. More than powerful enough to destroy light armoured vehicles and aircraft in seconds though. The AK-630 tends to overheat due to the increased rate of fire, however its 60 degree rotation speed means it is able to engage even the fastest aircraft at close range. Its main drawback is again the lack of ammunition. You have 2,000 rounds and you are not able to reload them during the battle. Being that the weapon is mounted on the bow, you have to resist the temptation to use it as your primary weapon. The East German version has a turret housing a twin 30mm AK-230 and a turret carrying a twin 57mm AK-725. The regular radar system is a drum tilt radar, which was not used in the Parkim. According to East German naval sources, the gun on the Parkim Corvette was optically guided, leaving the class totally without effective CIWS and therefore unable to counter anti-shipping missiles. There were also two SAN-5 or Strela-2 manpad positions aboard the Parkim, but without an effective radar-guided SAM, the Parkims were left totally and completely vulnerable to enemy precision-guided anti-shipping weapons. This was a major restriction and confined the Parkims to a coastal operation. The air search radar was the ubiquitous struck curve radar. This radar had a respectable 60 nautical mile or 110 kilometer radar range against aircraft flying at 5,000 meters and a less than respectable 20 nautical mile or 40 kilometer range against surface ships. The electronic defense suite was very basic and consisted of IFF receiver and transmitter and a multi-band passive RWR slave to a double 16 cell chaff dispenser. All in all, air defense, or lack thereof, was a very restrictive factor in the tactical usefulness of the original Parkim design. Capable anti-submarine warfare weapons, the torpedo tubes were loaded with acoustic or wire-guided torpedoes. This gave the Parkims a precision submarine strike capability. Two RBU-6000 depth charge rocket launchers created a barrier defense against submarines, incoming torpedoes, and frogmen. Though relatively unsophisticated by Western standards, the RBU-6000 was very successful and a popular system, used on many small or large surface warships. With each launcher covering one side of the ship, ranges between 350 meters and 6,000 meters. The ammunition was swiftly reloaded from the magazine below deck. Maximum capacity was 96 rounds. The whole system was remotely directed by the Buriyar fire control system and could also be used for shore bombardment. 
The Parkims were able to drop depth charges and could transport and lay up to 60 mines. All in all, the Parkims were up to the task, namely to hunt and destroy enemy submarines in the coastal waters. Because of their lack of any real anti-shipping weapons, and more importantly because of the absence of modern air defence capability, their blue water value would indeed have been slight. This shortcoming was partially offset by Volk's marine doctrine, which regarded the Coney class frigates, equipped with radar-guided SAMs, as the cornerstone of their naval blue water air defence. In other words, in order to survive a modern naval war, they had to be escorted by radar-guided SAM carriers. But, as the biggest GDR warship building project in history, the Parking class truly was the high point of East German warship construction. So one thing to note is I think that it should have been the squadron vehicle, because the only way to get to the cap points really quickly is to be towed by a friendly SKR-7. Some of the pros of the vehicle are it has a survivable hull and superstructure, with high velocity shells tending to overpenetrate or miss something vital. It has well-spaced crew compartments. The RBU-6000 has a stable launch platform compared to the SKR-7, but it has a tedious grind, and it is marginally useful because your primary weapon is mounted on the rear of the ship, the rangefinder can't see in front of the bow. So you have to use the secondary armament to be able to target enemies coming from ahead. It is very tedious to try and switch between your main gun and your secondary armaments to get your rockets off. It has a powerful AA armament coupled with the radar, although it is very limited in its ammunition and you have to decide whether you want to save it for later on when the airstrikes come or whether you want to actually fight some enemies. The depth charge launchers are mounted inside the rear of the stern and so they are slightly protected, although the chances of using depth charges in an offensive manner are slight because the ship is so slow. And it has a search and track radar. So they were more like pros with a caveat. <laughs> so the cons for the ship are it is extremely slow compared to other ship classes and that just seems to be a theme with corvettes. Uh, it has a destroyer spawn so that's even worse it puts you in with the big boys and if you're up here to 5.0 you cannot compete with them in firepower or ammunition levels. Speaking of which it has a very low ammunition count for a large warship and the CIWS cannot be reloaded. The 76mm has a glacial reload speed on the cap point for a fast firing gun. The main gun has a rear placement indicating that it's for self defense or border enforcement duties. Ammo racks are exposed for the CIWS and the RBU launchers and an armor piercing round will ruin your day. It has a tedious grind for the useful weapon and so getting the RBU in the first place takes quite a long time. The RBU-6000 requires practice and it is ineffective within 400 meters. Main gun rangefinder is obstructed by the superstructure and can't assist with RBU shots from ahead. And you must change to the front mount AA to target enemies. Overall, it's a beautiful looking ship and it's exciting because it is a modern warship and it is going to show that they do have a place in this game. Unfortunately, the mechanics of this game, especially in the standard game mode, don't lend much use for a Corvette at this stage. Perhaps if they add submarines to the game in the near future, we'll certainly have some fun with her. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like and tell me what you'd like to see next. Until next time, Commander Tyrael, out.